Uh, hey everyone, this is Kristen Baker, the Arts and Humanities Specialist with the YMCA of the USA. I am here with Peter Kieswalter, one of the brilliant minds behind the East Village Opera Company. Uh, Peter, would you, do you call it a band? I know it's an opera company, but what? I would definitely call it a band. I think I use the word um, uh, or term opera company in a kind of ironic way. Um, anyone who's familiar with the East Village of New York would not normally associate this neighborhood with uh, the center of high culture, you know. So uh, I, I just thought the term East Village and Opera Company described what it is that we do musically, sort of a mix between high culture and rock and roll, for lack of a better word. You know? Well, and maybe get a little bit more specific about what the East Village Opera Company does, like what you guys do. Yeah, well, simply, it's... Um, a uh, band that plays old music on new instruments. That's the one sentence answer. More specifically, we take the hits of 100 to 300 years ago from operas um, and uh, play them on modern instruments. Um, electric guitars and drums and bass and keyboards. Uh, there's a string section, um, two great singers. And uh, just imagine what these composers uh, of genius would have done uh, were they alive today. And what projects are, are you guys currently working on now, or you personally? Oh, yeah, we'll see. We just got off the road, uh, having toured the last record. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm thinking about the next one. We've been asked by a number of legit opera companies to, uh, to um, you know, do an opera from start to finish oh, in wow. the style that, that, that we do it in. So I'm sort of investigating and researching a bit of that. Um, there's a, a show we're sending out on the road this fall. Um, it's a collaboration with a modern dance company here in New York called the, the Parsons Dance Company. Um, th where by they, they came to us and choreographed a bunch of, or a program to our music. So the, the two singers in the East Village Opera Company are heading out with, with the dance company doing a bunch of shows. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, a couple other things. But uh, um, there's, you know, never a dull moment around here. And what, um, obviously we're surrounded by recording equipment and uh, keyboards, and what, um, maybe talk about your sort of artistic passion. Uh, well, music, um, uh, you know, I came by it uh, uh, pretty young, and uh, but basically got my, my start or developed real passion for music uh, in school. Um, I was pretty fortunate to have a couple of great uh, teachers uh, back then who sort of, uh, saw something in me and just encouraged me and uh, and inspired me. Um, so uh, ever since uh, I was a kid, maybe 12, 13, uh, m music has been a pretty pretty important thing in my life. And so the teachers were really the adult, uh, those adult influencers that helped you like discover your passion? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, specifically when I got to high school, I was 12 when I got to grade 9, and there was a great uh, teacher there who... Um, he, he had been a professional musician and uh, uh, just encouraged uh, the gift in any music student he saw and and um, uh, w was a profound influence in my life uh, uh, saying you, this is something that you can't you can't just sort of enter into as to a way to make a living lightly it's got to be a matter of uh, you don't really have any other choice you know mm -hmm. so it took me a few years uh, after high school to figure out um, to figure out that, but definitely uh, those music teachers uh, in early school were, were uh, a profound impact on me, as were a couple of older uh, people, friends, an older brother who, uh, of course, I wanted to be like and always was stealing his records, uh, and a couple of older kids in high school, too, who, um, with whom I started my first band. Uh, so definitely I was always uh, taken under the wing of, of wiser and smarter older people. Do you remember the that moment when you, you like you realize like wow this is I can't do anything else like kind of that like that spark? Yeah, I do. Um, it and it's funny that you say moment because I can pretty well pinpoint it to one moment. I had uh, been a pretty serious music student um, in high school from grade nine to twelve, but kind of flew under the radar of uh, the cool people in high school. Um, it was a school really known for its athletics uh, department with great football teams and track teams. Uh, so no one really paid that much attention to the, you know, the, the nerds in the, in the band, you know. Um, uh, so we quietly did our, our concerts a few times a year, uh, and it wasn't until my last year, my last month in high school, an older friend who had been uh, to our high school uh, came and did one of those lunch hour concerts in the auditorium and he was trying out his new Top 40 band. It was a band that he put together to play the hits on the radio. And uh, 
he needed uh, someone who could play saxophone and keyboard, which is sort of what what uh, what I was playing in in high school at the time. Um, so it was all older people in the band except except me. I was the only one who was going to school at the time, and he did a lunch hour show. And I remember um, we were playing the song uh, "Blue Jean" by David Bowie, and there's a little sax break where you literally you play three notes, and uh, I played those, and the school went ballistic and, and I thought I, it took me so, so by surprise I thought isn't that funny here I've been busting my ass for for the last four years practicing Charlie Parker and transcribing his solos and playing the clarinet and uh, playing all this quote-unquote serious music uh, and then I played the like three notes in a rock band and uh, um, and all of a sudden all the people who never would have given me the time of day uh, um, Everyone knew who it, you in, were. <laughs> in the halls, uh, it was like I was an overnight, uh, you know, minor celebrity in my, oh. my my humble little high school. So definitely, that was that was, was a turning point and defining moment for me. Do you do anything outside of music that kind of helps reinvigorate your creativity? Like, do you kind of engage in any other artistic endeavors? No. Um, the short answer. Although I'm I'm working on a film. Uh, now uh, that will be um, a, a project uh, of this band, um, but no, the last five years since I started this band, this is this has been an all-consuming, uh, um, for lack of a better word, passion. Uh, it's been been my my bread and butter, my my way of life. Uh, um, I mean, I try to uh, to balance my life out and and uh, uh, you know play soccer across the way. I don't know if when you guys came here you saw the soccer yeah, pitch. Yeah. I, I, I go there once in a while and. Um, d just to maintain a bit of um, uh, of sanity and clear my mind, uh, um, but uh, this is pretty much it. I have a young family at home. I, I I try to see my little girl as much as possible. I've got twins on the way. Uh, oh, congratulations! Uh, thank you. Um, but uh, uh, when you you do your own thing, especially as an artist, it's it's uh, the, the work just never stops. Mm -hmm. You know, and the the actual art of it, the making of the music, plays a small fraction of the mm -hmm. of the time spent. You know. And um, recognizing that, you know, when you were younger, there were so many great uh, older people or adults in your life that helped you. Like, what message would you give to, you know, either YMCA employees or, or people with children or teachers out there to help, you know, other young budding artists like, like you were? Yeah. Um, uh, enthusiasm is, uh, is very contagious. Uh, and for me, I was very, very impressionable. Um, and completely insecure, and I latched on to to, to people that were uh, older, but uh, but inspired me with their their passion. Um, I'll, I'll never forget uh, um, some of the mentors in my life who who uh, would say, "Man, you got to check this record out," or uh, or took me into their fold and and uh, um, and just turned me on to things uh, uh, with with simple enthusiasm. You know, it was. It was refreshing not to be taught uh, in a sort of st strict or formal classroom kind of setting and just hang out one-on-one -on -one with a couple people um, who uh, just told me to check out certain records or lent me records or CDs. Uh, um, I don't know if kids still listen to CDs or yeah, records <laughs> these days, but, uh, but it, it was a few simple, simple acts of kindness um, that... Uh, made a profound impact on 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 me at a time when like a lot of people at the same age as a lot of kids are are just trying to find their way you know mm -hmm. um, they're they're floundering not sure what it is that they want to do um, and it was uh, it was a simple act of, of uh, enthusiastic kindness on the, on the part of a, a couple older people that uh, that really helped me through um, some some times of, uh, of of mass uh, teenage insecurity like like we've all been through you yeah. know um you know how it is yeah yeah well peter thank you so much for spending time with us and you guys can check out peter and the fantastic east village opera company at eastvillageoperacompany.com you can go there for tour dates and to check out the album and i think you guys have a myspace page everything everything you can yeah just google east village opera company thank you so much for your time thanks